to achieve its vision of a world in which every man, woman, and child has access at all times to the food needed for an active and healthy life, WFP needs frequent, reliable food security data. Hi, I'm Jean Martin, Senior Analyst at WFP. The Vulnerability Analysis and Mapping Unit that I work for needs to provide information on who is food insecure or vulnerable, how many people are food insecure or vulnerable, where they live, why they are food insecure or vulnerable, what can be done to save their lives and livelihoods, and how the situation is likely to evolve, and what risks threaten them. Traditionally, we've answered these questions through face-to-face -face surveys. And recently, we've also been testing mobile technology to collect this information remotely. We use three different modalities to collect this data. Firstly, calls through operators, live calls from a call center, essentially. Number two, SMS surveys. Number three, interactive voice response, robocalls. In all cases, respondents are contacted on their own phones. There's no need for smartphones or data plans or other hardware. We're also beginning to experiment with web surveys and with chatbots. In any case, we usually ask about what a household has been eating, how they cope when there isn't enough food to go around. We also ask about food availability, food prices in local markets, and quite often at the end of a survey, we ask an open-ended question. This allows respondents to explain, using their own words, what the food security situation is like in their community. The types of questions we ask really depends on which modality is used. SMS questions need to be very simple so that respondents can answer in just a few words. Now, if an operator is placing the call, Questions can be a little bit more complex because the operator is there to explain and check that the person has really understood the question. In any case, the principle is, that short and, is, is to use short and simple questions that require short and simple responses. That's the key to success. One of the advantages of remote surveys is that a large volume of data can be collected. We're on pace to do a quarter of a million surveys this year. However, this large quantity of data means that we have to automate the process. Once the data has been cleaned, it's uploaded to a stats engine and then examined by our analysts. These results are published as a global public good. All these reports are available online on our interactive website on a free and open access basis. We've also built an API, an application program interface. It's a conduit for data. This means that the data is machine readable and can be accessed by any organization that's interested in our data so they can do their own analysis and own visualizations. In addition to just collecting data from our beneficiaries and surrounding communities, we also want to give people the information that we collect. To that end, we've been experimenting with two-way communication. In Somalia, for example, the operators who, do, who place outgoing calls also take incoming calls from beneficiaries all over the country. Respondents and the people who call in sometimes have questions about the next WFP food distribution or they want more information about projects in their area and the operators answer those questions. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, we set up an interactive voice response system. Uh, this is like when you call your bank and you navigate a voice prompt. Well, beneficiaries who live in the uh, camp in eastern Congo where we've been piloting these, these tools can call in free of charge and access information from WFP that's important and useful for them example, like, like food prices or dates of food distributions. But they can even record and leave us a message. The advantage of an IVR, interactive voice response system, is that it's there 24 seven. And when our operators come back to the office, they can listen to messages that have been recorded, uh, refer the, the question to the right person, or call beneficiaries back if needed. Right now, we're also working on a chat application, a chatbot. A chatbot is a, a robot that lives on a smartphone. Uh, it gives you questions. That's coming soon. And we're also working with Facebook's Free Basics platform. With Free Basics, people can access relevant information for free via their internet enabled phones. Uh, this works in over 50 countries, and we're piloting it right now in Malawi, where people can access weekly market price data and market news that MVAM has collected on a website that we've built for Free Basics. And that includes a polling function that allows users or visitors to the website to take simple surveys and provide us with feedback. Now, what are the pros and cons of using mobile technology? Well, there are a number of advantages, obviously, and the first one is security. With remote data collection, there is no need for boots on the ground. We've been able to access areas in Iraq, Yemen, and Syria where it's simply too dangerous to send people. 
We've been collecting light surveys and food security data from these countries every month, in spite of the fact that they're in the throes of the conflict. The second benefit is turnaround time. Traditional face-to-face -face assessments take four to six weeks to complete, but the turnaround with mobile VAM is between one and two weeks. For example, in Malawi, we were able to implement 1,000 SMS surveys in just a, just a day. In 24 hours, we got the 1,000 surveys. We're then able to process and analyze the data, and the report was available online that very week. Another advantage of mobile surveys is the lower cost involved. We know that face-to-face -face surveys cost anything between $20 to $40 per household for simple surveys. With mobile VAM, we're doing these light surveys with, at a cost of between $5 and $9. Of course, we can't entirely compare a phone survey uh, to a face-to-face -face survey because uh, a phone survey will produce more limited information, but it's still an important difference. Another asset of mobile surveys is the flexibility uh, it, it offers. We've uh, been able to use mobile surveys for different indicators, traditional indicators, uh, and also for m and &E indicators, such as did the food arrive on time or were there any issues with accessing food and so on. We're now working on collecting nutrition indicators as well. Now, of course, there are a number of challenges, and the biggest challenge is understanding bias with phone surveys. Illiteracy and phone ownership are sources of bias. Uh, who owns the phone in the household? Uh, is it the man or the woman? Do poor people have access to, to cell phones? This means that there's always some statistical verification that's needed at the end of the analysis. Then, of course, the challenge is the sheer volume of data that we're creating. Uh, thousands of surveys are done every month, and to deal with the volume of data that's being generated, we've had to set up a highly automated workflow with a centralized database that processes the data. Lastly, our questionnaires need to be short. MVAM tools are not suited for longer and more complex questionnaires. For long and complex surveys, we still continue to rely on face-to-face -face surveys, and there are, in fact, a lot of interesting complementarities between mobile and face-to-face. Our mobile surveys, MVAM, currently active in 30 countries, including four level three emergencies, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and South Sudan, and we're still expanding. The countries highlighted in light blue are those where we're about to start working. MVAM would not be possible without its partners. While creating and refining our methodology, we've worked closely with a major international survey company and the universities of Tulane and Leiden. Our partners also include um, private companies that have provided us with the technology and established ways to collect the data. A variety of donors and private sector entities have provided financial support. And most recently, we've also worked with companies that have developed data, visualiz data visualization tools. At the moment, our monthly reports are usually narrative heavy. They're in PDF format. And we're trying to move to um, reports with less text and more interactive visualizations that engage the users and that allows readers to zoom into specific areas and have the information pop up as, as people browse through our reports. For more information on mobile VAM, please visit our website where you'll find our bulletins, our data bank, our API, and our other resources. You can follow the progress and the project news via our blog. And for regular updates, follow us on Twitter at mobilevam. Thanks for watching this introduction to MVAM.